Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, my day just got a lot better. Foundry DevTools, this open source project, officially launched on GitHub. Uh, if you haven't already and you are a developer, make sure you go out there and star it uh, and check out the project. Um, what I wanted to just talk briefly about what this tool is designed to do and then how you can contribute to it and um, then some additional channel updates after that. So stay with me here. Uh, but essentially, what this tool allows you to do is run the code you would normally write in the online IDE and Foundry in your local IDE of choice, right? So Foundry has its own Git implementation and you can check out any of the code that is in code authoring uh, within Foundry. They provide a, a simple feature in the UI that lets you get the checkout URL with all the authorization in the URL. And then you can go in, clone that repo locally, and you can edit the code, but, but what you couldn't do before is run it. And Foundry comes with a set of transform decorators, typically, that um, sit on top of your transform function, and they provide the inputs and deal with the outputs, and the inputs are all, almost always data sets, and the outputs are data sets in Foundry. Um, so when you were working locally, you couldn't actually debug locally, you couldn't run the code locally, and that was really problematic for a developer who might prefer a specific IDE. They want to know, like, hey, my changes actually work, and that also the output's there. And you don't even have to leave Foundry in a lot of cases to, um, you, know, you don't have to leave Foundry uh, when you're using this tool to go ahead and test your code, right? And so that makes life a lot easier um, for developers who want to use the local IDE. I'm not a fan of doing that. I advocate for using the web-based IDE because I believe maintaining stacks is a gigantic waste of time. But uh, I do understand why people might want to do it, especially if they want to use libraries that don't exist in Foundry and, aren't, and can't be installed. So there's tools like Dask, for example, I think that is shown in here uh, in the documentation where if you want to use um, some library that you can't install in Foundry, you can do it locally and you can manipulate that data uh, with that tool. So that is really helpful if you want to um, use a different technology that might not be inside the web-based version of Foundry and you want to manipulate that locally and do some things locally. It's still not going to run when it's in Foundry, though, is my understanding. So you would still need to be running that in the stack or provide some other place to run that code. But um, that, so that's another benefit. There is um, several, a couple of clients. So there's this Foundry REST client, which is great for manipulating um, Foundry data sets. You guys can read all about it. I'll leave links in the description, which is really cool. And there's also an implementation of the Foundry file system uh, so that you can work with the Foundry file system directly, which is actually also really cool because um, there's a lot of use cases I have in my mind of how I want to allow people to, um, to do that. And so this is through custom applications. And so having this um, automatic, this SDK already there with these libraries makes it a lot easier. Um, and you can read about authentication and some of the architecture. If you're a developer, you should read this. It'll really paint a good picture of like what's going on under the hood so you know what's going on. And coming soon, just so you all know, currently the way this is set up is like, you have to have Foundry stack access still in order to run anything. They haven't mocked the Foundry stack yet. But in the works, I'm told, uh, is an implementation where if you can use local HDFS and, your, and a Foundry mock, and then you can run this and create Foundry data transforms without needing access to a Foundry stack, these transform functions that you write will just work. And what that'll allow the open source community to do is really cool things like creating transforms to build um, features, say for logistic regression model training um, from public data sets. It would allow you to create transforms for standard ontology objects, kind of like a schema.org. And then you can also build orchestration. So that's one of the things that I want to do is continue to build some orchestration in this tool um, that wraps common things that I have to do in the UI so that I don't need the UI anymore and I can just use like a CLI tool, for example. Um, so that is another really cool thing you can build this project and something that I plan to um, look into doing as well. So if you haven't done so and you're a Python developer, go check out this code. If you're not a Python developer and you're just a Python or an, an edge software engineer and you don't know Python, still go check it out because GPT can tell you everything you need to know about what the code is doing. It can write code for you that you could build a test for and then submit a PR. So um, even if you're not a Python developer, I encourage you to check it out and get involved in the project. And I will definitely be involved and you will see me in here. Um, and if you want more information, uh, the creator is on my Discord. So you could jump on the Discord and uh, chat with him. He said to send any questions that you all have over to him on the Discord regarding how to set this up and use it. But don't bombard him with stuff until you read the documentation and you go through the steps yourself. And maybe if you get stuck, then then reach out on the Discord server. I don't want to bombard the guy with too many questions. <laughs> so be kind. Uh, and coming soon, a uh, new update. I will be talking about my new role. Um, spoiler alert, it's not Palantir. 
uh, but it is a huge part of what they're doing. Uh, it is it is going to be involved in working with some of the people at the highest levels within Palantir and working every day with Foundry. And I will let you know what it is. It's going to put me right at the center of every, of every organization around the world that wants to implement Foundry, right, and wants to do it right, and they want to build their business around Foundry. And it's an incredible opportunity. I will be working as part of a lot of the strategic partnership along with a host of other companies that um, – want to to leverage foundry to digitally transform their business and i will make a whole video about what that role is and where i'm going so stay tuned for that uh and everyone stay safe out there and i will see you soon